Oh, better shot. Yeah. Yeah. Shoulders and knees. Oh, yeah. I guess I got the group this thing. Up. <laughs> there you go. Okay. 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 Uh, we're going to go ahead and start. We're we're not going to call to order yet. We're just going to do our uh, the finish up the budget items that we have to do, and then we'll call and then we'll call to order. Our 2021 budget summary. 
Uh, the total revenue is uh, $6,853,943 with expenses of $6,828,426. The difference in that is uh, $25,500. And we are going to uh, make a motion. I guess we should do the ordinance first and then make a motion to advertise. Okay. Okay, so we're going to make a motion now. I would entertain a motion to um, advertise the budget for uh, approval by the citizens prior to our vote in December. For now, Dave. All in favor? Did you comment? Yeah, my, my only heartburn is is the increase in, in the fire tax. The, the fire tax revenue could be increased by virtue of the fact that you know you have improvements like uh, working these properties could be substantial improvements. So it's not a big deal, but in this year I think we, should, we need to pay attention to taxes. So I, I have a little bit, albeit it's a small increase, I have a little bit of a heartburn because we're going to get more money. In, without the fire, without the increase in the fire <clears throat> Any other comment? Questions? Okay, I have the first and the second. All in favor? Oh, we already did that, sorry. <laughs> Motion carries with one uh, nay. Okay, Ordinance 2020-5 is the uh, tax levy ordinance, and as Danny just said, um, the, the fire-related uh, tax went from uh, 0.28 to, from, I'm sorry, from 0.25 to 0.28. It's a $2.80 increase on uh, $100,000 of assessed value, so it is a small amount. But, uh, understand Benny's objection to and the tax rate for general purposes went up by $18.50 which is a total of 1.85 mils so it's $18.50 on $100,000 of assessed value I would need a motion to accept the uh, ordinance Inga Second by Ryan. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Dennis, with the same exception? Yeah, right. Yeah. With the same exception? Okay. Motion carries. Okay. This time I'd like to call to order. Please rise for the pledge.
we have some veterans from our VFW, the New Freedom VFW post here tonight. Uh, if you'd like to take a couple of minutes, uh, if they could just uh, stand and introduce themselves, or you can stay seated and introduce yourself and you'd rather. Captain John A. Smith, Commander, Post Deputy 12. Carl Jenko, Senior Vice Commander, New Freedom Post 7012. Alex Kelly, Adjutant and Quartermaster, BFW Post 7012. Mm -hmm. Terry Kelly, uh, I have no responsibility here at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right enough, Mr. Judge. Pete Cottonell, Trustee, and 7012. Sam Johnson, Fire Marshal. Uh, thank you. A um, couple of things on the president's report. Um, I wanted to announce that uh, I think I've told everybody at this point. Uh, our borough manager has accepted. Uh, he's going to be giving notice on 11:16, and he will start here February 1st. So we're not announcing names or anything until after he gives his notice on the 16th because he wants to do that in person, in person uh, with his council. Um, I have something I wanted to present tonight. And I'm going to be making a motion. So Brian, if you wouldn't mind taking the meeting for a little bit. OK. Uh, VFW Post 7012, um, and in full disclosure, I'm a member of the Auxiliary, and Dave is a member of the Auxiliary of the Post. Um, it says out in front that the Post is dedicated in memory of the men and women of this vicinity who served in the armed forces of our country, preserving our freedom and our way of life. Uh, the Post was uh, founded in uh, April of 1946. And they have they got their current location uh, in March of 1948 at 123 West Main Street. Uh, today there are 177 combat vets that are regular members of the VFW Post, nine from World War II, spanning all the way up through uh, the Mid East. Uh, they've served our community for 74 years. They uh, do things like the Easter egg hunt, Memorial Day coffee on Route 83, Memorial Day grave flags, New Freedom Festival, greets across America, the cemetery cleanup, uh, Children's Christmas, Diabetes Association breakfast, uh, their last car show, which of course with COVID, but their last car show, uh, they donated the money to our canine at SRPD to help with that. They participate in the SYC Food Pantry Food Drive, the Senior Center, Rose Fire. They give out scholarships every year um, to graduating seniors, rallies for fire and police, cars to the troops, toys for tots, coat drive, rides for vets, color guard, and they also have a monthly community breakfast. So they're busy. Um, the VFW, the one thing that's not on here is that in, in April of uh, 2019, the director of the VFW addressing the U.S. House discussed how 20 veterans a day commit suicide. And the VA, VFW outreach reaches out to those people and gives them a home, gives them a sense of community, and helps to get, get through the, those... Um, those hard times. So we don't know how many people, of course, that they say, but it, it, it's significant. Uh, currently, to go along with COVID, <laughs> the buildings are failing. Uh, there are two roofs on the uh, properties. The foundation is bad. The chimney's bad. Uh, the main, main post, were they were struggling to uh, get the electrical done uh, and to keep the electrical going. Uh, the New Freedom VFW, by charter, has to remain in New Freedom. They need a new building. So I was talking to Jack and Carl and trying to figure out what New Freedom could possibly do to help. Uh, new Freedom Borough has always been generous in supporting the lines and the scouts. We've leased ground to the Lions Club. We've leased, grounds to, leased ground to the scouts to build the scout house at Veterans Park. 
these are the men and women who served America in foreign lands. They gave a piece of their life for America, for new freedom. It's now our honor to give a small piece of new freedom to them, and that's what I'm here to ask for tonight. Uh, there is park land at the bottom of Weathers Weathersfield. It's zoned to allow a private club. The VS VFW is a community service organization similar to the Lions and the Scouts. And this action will keep the VFW post 7012 alive and in new freedom. The building will have to, of course, go to Planning Commission and zoning because it is, it is an exception. Um, so we'll have to go through that. Uh, before taking questions on this, um, I think I would like to make the motion just so we know what's on the table. And I think it's especially appropriate to be making this motion so close to Veterans Day for our veterans here in New Freedom. So the motion is to lease to the New Freedom VFW post 7012 the wooded ground to the right or southwestern side of Weathersfield Drive, bordered by North Constitution and Weathersfield, for a 99 year renewable in perpetuity lease for the sum of a dollar a year. And what that will do is it will allow them to put in a new post, a new building, and I have uh, copies of the plot plan. questions. The little the wooded plot right here is, I think, a little bit over five acres. Okay. So I mean, it would basically be the footprint of the building. I mean, they've also talked about cutting some trails in for walking trails in the woods, but that would benefit all the residents, not just the BFW. So if we if, if, if we approve this, it just they have to have a it's just a regular uh, process through the planning commission. Right. They would need building permits, planning commission, it zoning. Would need, it would need a special exception, not a variance. So a special right. exception is pretty, I won't say it's easy to get, but if you follow the criteria for the special exception, I mean, you know, the zoning court here report is really obligated to provide a special exception. Right. <clears throat> Any questions from the audience? Any citizens? Is that property being used for anything at all right now? No, it's really just brush. There's not even any trails cut right now through it. It's just a um, patch of woods as you go into Weathersville. Does a survey need to be done because of traffic coming off of North Constitution onto there? Yeah, the road's already there. I don't think it, you'd have a problem with that. Okay. And, uh, and the traffic it's actually changing. Yeah, it's actually intermittent traffic. It's not, I mean, it's not going to be any more than what you get whenever the soccer game's over and the people come out of the soccer field. Yeah. yeah. I was going to be in the next question. Would they use the existing driveway? Yes. Okay. Now they have to move the gate or anything like that? Or is it, yeah, yeah, the, the gate, gate would have to be moved. The gate would have to be moved. <coughs> We'd probably move forward about 100 feet and put back up. They would be responsible for putting in parking? Yes. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, 
You got all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? My vote is also aye. stuff so I, I need I feel like I need to address it so I, I'm, I'm going to um, I was on uh, rec council I think for 12 years I lost count I think I was off then I came back on uh, I am very pro rec I mean I think even though I'm a fiscal conservative <laughs> I do believe that uh, it takes a village to raise a child and I think that rec is, is very important for that so some of the things that I've heard in the community and from different people. Um, the Burkentin Pavilion that they've agreed to build in Marge Goodfellow Park is a separate issue from the playground and that pavilion is going to be built as soon as we're ready for them to build it. Um, the teen playground, um, and I apologize if there was anything that I did to create this, but we gave, we discussed it at the last meeting and the meeting before, and in September, I passed the information on to Rec Council, and I felt they were sufficiently notified, and they had a meeting in between, so I felt that there was, should have been no problem with them being notified. Uh, the pad for the skate and pickleball was discussed I guess last, our last meeting, that was something that I called Mary Ann about, and we agreed where to put it. I mean, you picked where to put it. So I, I thought that we were on the same page with that. I'm hoping that the teen playground will get the kids off the smaller playground, and that the skateball slash pickleball pad will get the <clears throat> skaters off of your tennis court and over onto that. Um, the rec director is not in any way, shape, or form replacing the rec board. That is not happening. The rec director is going to be paid for by council under a grant, and the rec director will work with rec to hopefully increase the number of programs that we're running and make it so that it's rec for all age groups, all abilities, and that we have a good solid rec program and hopefully it'll take some of the pressure off of you guys so that you have more time for fundraising more time to do what you need to get done for rec i think that addressed every all the all the all the things can we respond you you can, can come but, but I, I think i'm going to let you respond during the time okay. that's set aside for you guys okay. i mean you know i just i just this is my president's report, so I really just wanted to get that out there. But yes, definitely, you can you can respond however you would like. Okay. I, I think that's all I have for the president's report. So the next thing we have is the consent agenda. Motion to accept the consent agenda is written. Second. Second. Any discussion? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think these, it all. These are all due on the books from, from, from last month. From last month. Yeah. That'll probably go up if you get another COVID shutdown, too. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? My vote is aye. Okay, public comment on agenda items. Okay. And do you, you mind if I start with Rick? Yeah, you? No, you're off. Okay. And that would be right. Okay, do we come up there just from here? Or what? Oh, there's a microphone if you like. Okay. Thank you for seeing us. I'm Mary and Michael. I'm the president of the Recreation Council. Snip that up. Mary Ann. It's turned off. Can you hear me? Council's grad, um, gratitude for the completion of Mark Fellow Park and the wonderful tennis courts, playground, and the recently installed new benches at Veterans Park. As much as we appreciate the borough's support, we find our board often feeling overlooked or at least confused about direction on some projects. As we try to serve the community, it can be somewhat overwhelming with only four members that often have other commitments and cannot volunteer an excessive amount of hours. Um, we did. We are adding a fifth person, which we're really happy about. She's getting her paperwork together, so that'll take care of our quota of um, members that we need to have. Um, we believe it would benefit all parties, the residents, the council, and the rec board, if we agree to meet once a month as a workshop with you, um, two members from the borough, or for your borough council, and two members from us. Um, this allows some ideas to be discussed, plans proposed, finances considered, and taken back to our respective boards and later discussed at both your and our public meetings. I believe our goals are the same, but how we are approaching them is significantly different. Um, I want us to all work together and I want to have great programs for this community. And, um, you know, in response to what you said, I feel like things were said in passing and, you know, a brief conversation is not a motion make, and that's what's happening. Is all of a sudden we have four parks and recreation, and we're like, you know, feeling secondary to that. But you know, I want us to figure this out and work together and do what's best for New Freedom. Um, I agree, and I think that um, one thing that we could do. I mean, you remember back. We used to switch off, and one of us would come to council every month. See, I don't, I don't remember. I don't think I was part so of. I've this. been, I've been in count. I mean, I've done it. So yeah, I mean, no, I'm sure. Been, like I know Marie was. Yeah. Here all the time. Yeah, so Marie was I here all the time. That part I did, either didn't get passed on that, that yeah. happened, but I never know. But what I, well, I think done. I think we should. We I mean, you, I mean, you're under committee reports tonight, and you know the mayor reports, the solicitor reports, all the committees report. So you are our rec board, and so I really think it'd be a good idea for you guys to come. And it doesn't have to be the same person each time, but then you would be here, and you would hear us make a motion to do whatever, or say that next month we're gonna vote on whatever. And then there would be no break, or hopefully very little <laughs> breakdown in communication. I well, guarantee it'll never happen. There's that, but there's also, you know, we would like your involvement in what we're doing, too. So I would still like to have these twice a month or whatever, you know, meetings where we can all get together. You know, you guys have great ideas, we have great ideas, and let's see what we can make happen. Yeah, I think we could come up with a couple people on on rec con or to come up to rec council and meet and come up with some programs. And, and um, 
I'm excited because you mean when the ladies come to the meeting every month and say what's going on. Yeah, just okay. a brief, yeah, a brief report that you know would just tell us where where you guys are. You know, yeah, Marianne has to play nice. I don't. Okay. But thank you for hearing me. I hope we can figure this out and you know come up with you know great programs. Tanya has given me wonderful ideas. Yeah. Um, one thing I probably should mention, recreation has never really done parks, per se. I mean, you guys, I mean, even the budget you just submitted, I went back 10 years, you don't really put any money in the budget to do grass cutting, maintenance, put in a new bench or whatever. That all comes out of the general fund and it comes out of this council. And the council is responsible for upgrading parks or making, you know, you guys certainly, I mean, certainly have the voice to come and tell us we would like you to do this or this or this. And I think I've told you, you know, if you guys come up with whatever and you have an idea to fund it and we can help, then of course, you know, bring it to council and we'll help fund it. But really the, the crux of the whole thing is that we need to have <coughs> programs and that's what really Rex's responsibility is. It's, it's the program area. And in my I mind. I was always of the impression that, you know, because what happened out there, you know, the, the, the idea of the creation of that playground, I think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you guys did a great job. We get nothing but, we get nothing but compliments right. on Marge Goodfellow I mean, Park. I mean, in fact, I think the rail, when the rail trail people come in tonight, I'm sure they'll say something good about Marge Goodfellow Park, because when we went on the trail walk with them, they loved it. You know, uh, DCNR came in when they planted the trees. They loved it. I mean, it was. You know, I, I don't. I, I don't disagree that it's, it's that it's a great so thing. When you look at that, you're like, we were very, very much a part of what happened. Oh, absolutely, yeah. To me, and it was always my understanding that. And I'll have to look further in our bylaws, but I did think that we were. You know, we had responsibility for the parks, not for mowing the lawn or all that stuff, but you know. Playgrounds and stuff like that, I would think, would fall under well, even us being involved, you know, not. Yeah. yeah. And it started with a grant. So, I mean, right. you know, but that, and I, you know, what's going to be available in the future, I don't know. But right. there certainly will look for grants and so we'll try to find things to do and, you know, and to help out. But yeah. So, yeah, I appreciate, I yeah. appreciate you, Kai. I appreciate you saying that. And I really, really would like somebody from REC to come each time and report whenever it's the committee time. Because I think that would, like, clear up a lot of, Issues, right. okay. you know. and I appreciate the use of it as well. Okay. All right. All right. Great. Um, Thanks, you Mary. Say May I come at yeah. as well? Sure. Presented it in council, and it was a couple of couple three month process, you know. And but like I said, I'll, I'll take that as the leader, and I'll take ownership of that. That was that's all me. So that, that, that's, that, 
that it was a, just a big surprise to, to hear that this motion had come and passed and that it had been presented because it really hadn't. So I just kind of wanted to make sure that that was I, I, I guess the only other thing I want to make clear is this was a gift. I mean, this was <laughs> this was people in the community saying, "Here's money, put in a team park." Well, see, that's the other thing. We didn't know where the money came from. We were told there was thirty-six thousand dollars approved, and we're like, "Well, where'd that come from?" Well, it it, it wasn't and that was it wasn't given room. out in general. I guess that that's why I want to bring it up that's because it it, it was a directed donation. It was like, "Here's thirty-six thousand dollars, put in a team park." I, I was upset that the teens didn't have anything to do. So and I and it, and it was and it was me and I went out and, and I and Tanya went out and found money and so that it was a directed donation. So and it was borough council and I mean no matter how you cut it, the, the borough council has the responsibility to upgrade or do things to parks. So I guess we just not like without your input. I would like. Yeah. Particular one, and I'm sure it was just an oversight and not intentional in any way. But um, that, that's all. I just kind of wanted to make sure that. Yeah, I understand. You know, and I appreciate Ryan, you know, that he comes to our meeting. Yeah. Awesome. And yeah, so anyway, that's all I got. Uh, Erica, have I don't know. If I was going to, if we could have clarity, you went out and got the thirty-six thousand from donations. Just where? I mean, who? What? I mean, that's a lot of money. I mean, just where did thirty-six thousand fall? from? Well, it was community, it was donations and from businesses. So businesses. Uh, back in that corner is, yeah, and individuals. I mean, back in that corner is 6,000 of it. My wife donated $6,000. Okay. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's just it's just what we did. We felt strongly enough about putting it in that, you know, we, we just really thought it was a good idea. And, it, and anytime you have a gift like that, I mean, it, it's, it's, it just is a, a good thing. I mean, there's, it's not costing the taxpayers anything. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not opposed to it. Or I know, it yeah. It was a surprise, and I didn't know, we didn't know, as treasurer of Brett Council, like, I was like, well, where's that money? Yeah. Did it, did it get redirected? I don't know. You know, so it's right. good to know it was a gift that specified for that. That's wonderful. That's great, yeah. great news, so. Yeah. That's all. Awesome. Thank you. And then the last thing on the right. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, oh. Jim. Oh. The last thing I just wanted to touch base on is I'm hoping that with, we're adding things. I know the parkour course is going away, you know, we're finding that we don't need that, but I want to make sure that the walking path is still yeah, we, the, the, uh, universal we haven't taken anything away from that, That's but again, I mean, you know, have you, I mean, the price of the walking path, you're, it's probably going to require another grant. Because, no, I, I mean, and for a mile of track, I, mean, I just you know, for adding stuff, I don't want, you know, yeah. things messing up with the initial design of that park. Because people are really looking forward to a walking and running path and then a multi-field, purpose field as well. Okay, okay. thank you. All right. So, I guess the only issue that I have is at the pre-meeting on October 1st when we had a conversation about the teen playground which has great intentions we said okay this is a great idea what we would request is you know that a survey be done see if it's something the community wants I mean we are as volunteers and voted members we are servants of our community and so therefore I think it's always wise to to see what the community thinks I mean that's what I did for for the playground um, also you Sorry. know for a, and it was agreed upon it was agreed upon I, in I, that I, meeting of a survey also you that recall a survey because I don't recall saying that I was going. Why would you? Why would you even do a survey on something that was to, already fully funded and was a gift? To see if it is going to be well used. There wasn't a survey on the whole park. But, and, no, yeah, there was a survey on the playground. And we. I, I don't think it was funded when we had our free meeting that we knew of. Yeah, it yeah. was. I oh we we did not know it was funded at that. Yeah, point. I I when I gave the information to Jan, I did, said. I said, "This here's the what we're planning on putting in." Wait a minute. I asked for a location. Wait a minute. There was the only question you asked me was, 
what type of equipment would you like to see? And, and I sent you a couple pieces of equipment and I never heard back. So there was nothing to take to Rec Council. I checked every single one of my emails. There was no plans sent to me. I to handed them to you, Jan. No, I have no plans. I handed them to you when you were at our meeting in September. Those were, I, that was an idea. If that was, uh, I, that was an idea that you said, this is an idea that we have. Those were not the full plants. Then why did you come back to me and say what other equipment, what equipment would you like to see at a teen playground? You texted that to me and I sent you a couple of ideas. Right. But there was no plan like in stone that was brought I, back to rec council, nothing. I mean, I, I have copies of the, of the plans that I gave out that night. I gave everybody That wasn't on, set on in council. stone though. I gave you a copy of the plan. I gave you the equipment list. No, you and said I asked this you was, for a location. This was the idea. You said this is the idea that we have for a teen park. It was nothing that was presented in October. I believe. I believe at that at that meeting it was also discussed about the location along the um, the, the, the stream or creek or whatever you want to call it. Creek. <laughs> Right, but what I'm saying is, is it was never like formally presented. That was never set in stone. It was the idea. At that September meeting, it was said, this is the idea that we have for the teen playground. Then a couple days later, Andy came back to me in a text and said, hey, what kind of equipment would you like to see at the teen playground? I sent him a couple pieces of equipment and never heard back. Well, so what I'm saying what is... there here is that we're trying to... But it's already set in stone. But it's, already, like, it's already done, so moving right. forward, we're saying. Yes, and all I'm saying is, is in your notes that you sent to us from that pre-meeting, it said that you wanted to keep Rec Council informed, and that has to go both ways. Right, and that's why I want you guys to come to a meeting every month with Council so that you could tell us what you've done for the month. I think it'll stop things from happening, like when when uh, the, pl the playground was done with the uh, Joel St Stenberg's um, uh, program that you guys yep. decided to do. I mean, we would have known at that point. We would have been able to say at that point, he needs to get insurance. He needs to get his child safety clearances. And well, he already had all of that and tried to drop it off, but the office was closed, so he emailed it over. Not a problem. After he was told, <laughs> I mean, well, I, I did, but he did not. A contract, and we would email a contract, same as we email to you yes. or fax right. to you. And I put in the contract that night of the pre meeting. I sat there and filled it out and handed it in. And I asked him previously to hand in his clearances. And so. I think we I think we got them the day we before the program started. So right. I mean but yeah, I think but it but it's okay. It worked out. Sure. I mean I I, I don't know where you want to go with this. I'm just saying final plans would have been nice to share with Rec Council for us to know about it. They were the final plans. I gave them to everyone on council. And actually suggested we take a, a, a thirty, day, you know, wait a month and vote on it at the next meeting, which I agreed with. I said there's there's no rush. We'll do it at the next meeting. We did want to beat the price increase because there is a price increase for 2021. And Steve had talked about the price increase, and if we ordered it before December 22nd, I think. But we had to get it in their queue, and then I talked to Donnie about can we store the store it. And he said, yeah, we would put it, you know, so I mean, it, it, it worked, you know, okay. so, and I understand what you're saying, and we will try to all communicate better in the future. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't have those plans. Valerie doesn't have those plans, I so plans. I, I don't know. But I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't what's get done that. is done. So. What did they say? They're saying none of us have the plan. I, none I, of us have them. I don't have the plan. Not one of us. He said he gave it to everybody at the meeting. I, I don't remember getting a plan. Well, I, I put it in your hands. What happened to it after that, I can't account for. Okay. Are you saying you gave it to all of us at that pre -meeting? No, I gave it to Jen. Oh, okay. And I assumed oh. that Jen would share it oh. with, with Rec Council. What? I mean, I don't know how. Are you if, talking about if this? If one of you come to to council, I'm going to assume that oh if we tell you the something. Are you talking about the September meeting? 
I'm sorry? You're talking about the September meeting. You gave me plans. Yes. You had stated in that meeting that that was an idea of the plans that you have. You said you've looked into it for a teen playground, and here's an idea of the plans that you have for a park. At the October meeting, you're saying all of us got it. We did not get anything at October. After that September meeting, you reached out to me and you said, what kind of equipment would you like to have? In my mind, that says the plans were okay, not final. Okay, we've already gone through all this. Right. I, I, I just want to be clear. In my mind, I gave you the plan. In your mind, Sorry. I didn't. But it's okay. Let's just move forward and we'll see if we Great. can do things better. Sounds awesome. As a group. Okay. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Huh. Just a couple of comments. Uh, if we could get the um, our website updated, um, make sure we. Singer Road is still closed, according to that. Um, so if we could, you know, just kind of look over that monthly and an update. The other thing, I've gotten a lot of questions from from residents about uh, the new construction uh, that we have posted. Is that is that occurring? Is are, are they going to continue to resurface over the winter, or are they going to wait till spring? They'll do a patch job over the winter after they. Okay, a, a lot of residents are thinking, well, if we're going to do this, we're going to go ahead and I know, are we using fuel um, funds? No. no, this is not liquid fuel, this okay. is general cost. Okay, all, all right. I know usually after October 15th, you can't, yeah. can't do that, but we will be doing yep. that yep. by what do we anticipate? We have no idea. So it's probably going to be sometime in 21. It's going to be, yeah, if the weather holds out, maybe much earlier than we think. Okay. It's all going to depend on what, like right now. Very good. It stays like this. So we, I can, people are just asking, you know, Mr. Mayor, what's going on here? Uh, another thing, I'd like to really thank the police department. Uh, I'm going to try to get, maybe have them come to our meeting so they can give us a report. I'd like to thank them. They have uh, really been observant of the playground. As I said last meeting, we had a, uh, one of the tables was broken. They caught the, the young man that did it. He's going to reimburse the borough for uh, for that. But another <coughs> thing, uh, I, also, I think it was Officer Blaze, Detective Blaze today. He said he's been looking out for the uh, basketball uh, park. I mean, he went by and saw you know, there was garbage everywhere. So he went down and and did a community effort based uh, talk with everybody that was there. There were about 15 kids there, you know, asking them to please clean up after themselves. There's a garbage can here. All the kids got together, they cleaned it up, they put it all in the garbage can, and these are the types of things that I'm really appreciative of uh, with all our parks that the, that the police are doing. It took a little bit of coaxing, but um, I'd like to publicly thank them for the job that they're doing there. Uh, the other th only other thing that I have right now is I, I, I have a problem or a question, and I'm glad that you're here uh, because it's going to involve you. We're talking about putting a pad in for skateboards. Am I correct? And pickleball. Nope, it'll just be for pickleball. There will be no sign off that says anything about skateboards. Okay, so there will be no skateboards allowed. No, we're not going to put a sign up that says no skateboards allowed any more than you do on any other road. What Mary Ann and I talked about was just putting a pad down. If people skate on it, they skate on it. If they don't, they don't. 
problem is we're asking the police to monitor the playground area and keep the kids on skateboards, off the of skateboards, and getting to the point where they're cited because we do have an ordinance. Do you have an ordinance against skateboards on public? And yes, in the park, on the sidewalks, in the public streets. So, and so that's why I'm I'm deferring that to you. If we're gonna have police enforce it one area of the park, and we have an ordinance, do we need to make some adjustments somehow? Or okay. Well, the tennis courts are already posted in skateboards. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, and the, the police are even asking that we post signs on the bandstand because that's how the table got broken because the kids decided they were going to use that as a ramp for bikes and for skateboards. Uh, so they, uh, I've asked them to keep the kids off the bandstand because what they do is they're on there going as fast as they can to the end of it, jumping, and then going down into the stones and the police are saying, we would like you to put a sign there, no skateboard. How many kids are there that we have? Do you count it? I mean, do you have enough count? Do you see a lot of them? Are there 12 or 3? Or well, one day there was 14 down on the basketball court, and the police went down and, and asked them to please get off the, get off the basketball court. You know, probably half of them were bikes, half of them were skateboards. They've well, been on the uh, tennis courts several times asking them to, to get off. I have done that probably four times, reminded them that, you know, it's a <coughs> tennis court, a football skateboard park, and, you know, they've all been very, you know, accommodating to leave, and, and I haven't really had a problem other than one time, uh, but that's why we put the signs up down there, because the police asked, it's hard to enforce when it's signs aren't there. Jen, I saw in your rec minutes last time that you were looking at um, skate parks and insurance and stuff like that. Are you guys still doing that? No, I gave up. You gave up? Yeah, because I tried pushing it through about five times and was denied. Yeah, so, it's been going on for 20 well, years. Yeah, liability insurance. We're, we're a low risk borough is what I understand from Tanya. No, 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 it was never said. Or, uh, the perma, they will not insure skate parks at all. Okay. I, I was told we're a low risk borough. No, and so. A skate park's a high risk. There is no such thing as a low risk borough. We're, right, that's what I mean. Like, you keep, they don't want to have a high risk activity they will not in this insure. borough. Right, that's what I'm saying. Um, there are signs, like in York, where they have a skate park that says skate at your own risk. They probably have 20 signs up there. Um, well, this, do you, want to comment? Like, you know, most municipalities are in the exact position that you're in. That they check into it, look at the liability, and ultimately pass on constructing a skateboard park uh, due to the fact that even if you have the signs and asking them to waive their liability, it's typically a child that doesn't have the ability to accept the waiver of liability, and therefore you're stuck with the claim. Um, I have a couple commit uh, other uh, comments, but I'll do that under committees as do the police. I did. I will make a comment that uh, we have a meeting scheduled. I think for the 14th, for the 16th, the 16th for. Um, to talk about the uh, nuisance ordinance and to try to put some teeth into it and see what we can do. I have to say that I, I'm, I'm not hugely hopeful, but at least we can try to see if we can uh, do something to get the, for the cars like that we know about up on uh, Washington, I guess it is, um, and some of the other places. So uh, that meeting is going to happen with uh, Steve and I think. Uh, 
and Wade and the mayor and myself. So, and uh, anyone else who wants to. On the 16th. It's on the 16th. Oh yeah, we can't. I'm sorry, we can't have a quorum. Yeah, so just the three of us. Yeah, but I will report back. I kind of would like to be there when you have that meeting. That will only give us two, right? two council members. Okay, I'll let, I'll let you know. Will you let me know? Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I've I've personally been dealing with that. On being the mayor, they get my phone number, and I've been on the phone uh, in the last month with probably about six different people that this concerns, and we need to address this with uh, um, with the solicitor and see what we can do uh, for that part of our community. Yep. Please. Do you want me to go or do oh, you? No, go okay. ahead. And then right. I, I have some comments. Okay. That I need to make. All right. So we had our first in-person meeting last week. That's the first time that we've actually been in person. So the chairman did read uh, six letters, thank you letters, or letters of appreciation that the department has received uh, since we started going uh, to the online meetings, thanking the department. One was from New Freedom for the murder suicide that they had. Uh, thank the department for their response. The police department received just under $41,000 in COVID grant money from the federal government that was distributed through York County. A little over 18,000 of that was transferred to the operating budget to, to replace the money that has been spent so far on COVID related expenses and the money that was given back to the high schools for the partial refund. The chief reported there had been no new vehicle arsons in New Freedom. They're still doing those extra patrols. Uh, there were no reported problems in any municipalities on Halloween or on Election Day. And uh, the Commission will be having a continuation meeting on November 17th because we were unable to reach an agreement on the budget. Basically, uh, Mike Shrike came here and told you guys about the new obligated activity uh, data that we would like to use to figure out which how much percentage each municipality pays. Glenrock will not accept that. Uh, Glenrock wants to use the old PPU formula that we have and those percentages. <coughs> the police chief did recommend using the PPU formula as well. So um, we're trying to find a compromise. Uh, as you know, New Freedom benefits right now under the obligated activity data. So Glenrock would end up paying an extra, I believe it was close to $70,000. 80000 So they say, they say they can't afford that. So we're hoping at the next meeting to find some compromise. Uh, one of the members from Glenrock, Victoria, said that she thought Glenrock was willing to compromise. So somewhere between uh, the PPUs and the obligated activity would be a percentage that maybe we could all agree on. So as of right now, we have that final number. We just don't know how much each municipality pays for that. And that was all I had. What was the, what was the total um, for all municipalities? Do you have that? Yes, yeah, so I, I do. It? So it, the, the total budget is a little bit over two million, but when you take away the school contributions and uh, railroad for the four municipalities, it's one million eight hundred and ninety-two thousand six hundred and forty-four dollars, and that gets divided up. And if you look at under the obligated activity, which is the new data that Mike Charkey was proposing from the IGA committee. New Freedom would pay 530,886 under the uh, 2020 PPUs that we use, it would be 589,747. So um, Stewartstown paid a little extra under the new formula, Glenrock <coughs> paid a lot extra. Shrewsbury's pretty much stayed pretty close to the same. So that's adding to that. I, th I think that's what we have to do. We, we need to come to a compromise on that. For any municipality to have to pay an additional $80,000 is asking an awful lot. And I think we need to come to some type of an agreement. Um, it'd be nice for New Freedom because I think theirs is $44,000 less. But there, there's something there that's not quite right in figuring those <coughs> incidents without 
the rest of the formula in there. I could give it to you. It's, it's about, we came out with 36,000 lines on an Excel spreadsheet, <laughs> and I don't think you really need that. Uh, I've got a, a, a spreadsheet here that it says, you know, when I try to print it out, it's so small you can't even read it. But we have to come up with something fair, and, and my opinion right now is we, need, we went with the PPU system. Bruce, I think you like the PPU system, am I right? Uh, you couldn't be more wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. The PPU system sucks. Let me just put it plump. And the, the, unfortunately, the police department itself seems to think the PPU system works, but I think it's because it makes it easier for them to, to tally. Erica, you've been with, with me at every meeting. What did you... Part of the puzzle in this is, on a three-year rolling average, it includes 2016, the, the half years of 2017, 18, and 19, Glenrock had a very high average in 2016, so that's why they're being slammed right now. But next year coming, when 2016 rolls off, then I think it will come in line with what it means to be. But with this right now, including 2016, that was very high usage for them, this is what's happening. So we, we have to come to terms with, with each other, every municipality, and think, okay, what happens if we lose Glenrock? I did speak to um, Buck Buchanan today from Shrewsbury, and um, he feels like maybe Shrewsbury feels like they're tired of supplementing Glenrock. And I think Dennis could probably speak to it that, I think he says for 20 years now, or however well, long he well, said. 20 years, but I mean, there was yeah, a period of time when Shrewsbury Road and Shrewsbury Road supplemented right. so, Glenrock's police budget to keep them, to keep them because they couldn't afford it, couldn't afford it, couldn't afford it. To the tune of about $100,000, right? I don't know the dollar amount there, but it was there. It was a lot of money. About 100000 Tony said. Yeah. yeah. I, I, that, that kind of, I, I just have one quick question. The 80K, is that an increase solely because of the calculation, or is yeah. part of that because they're actually going to be paying what they actually have? <coughs> it's going to, well, they're going to pay what you use, so they used a lot in Correct. 2016. Yeah. So it's, it, Sharkey's formula is, you know. Uh, but we were supplementing them the whole time, right? Even last year. No, they um, no. Last year they paid according to what the two-year PPU, I think. They paid uh, less than what we asked them. Up with. Yeah, we, they paid less than what we asked them to pay. They said they would pay their minimum PPU, and they wouldn't go over it. Right. So they did pay less, and we did supplement them. Right. I I think to put this in perspective, you need to just step back uh, about two and a half years. Some of you may recall we had a little raucous events around here talking about the police. I don't recall that. And I, I know, <laughs> memory fades. Uh, amazing how that happens. But in May, up at the community center, we took a vote, and it said we'd do a five-year commitment. Everybody ran around doing high fives and how great that was. Uh, everybody sort of left. At the end of that meeting, everybody pretty much cleared out and I left. And the fellow who was covering that from the York Dispatch, a guy named uh, uh, Chris Thornblazer, uh, he caught me in a parking lot. He said, well, what do you think? And I said, well, unfortunately, you didn't solve anything here. I said, this is still going to be unaffordable. Uh, and within a few years, you will find communities will come up and tell you they can't pay the bill. Now, that wasn't any divine insight. I mean, the skies didn't part. The hand of God didn't come and touch me and give me divine insight. That was because I could do middle school math. I knew what Mike Sharkey was proposing for the um, pay raises for the police union. We knew that the uh, Stewartstown uh, um, subsidies, uh, their buy-ins were over. I, all of those things were sort of rolled up. It was sort of all well known. And all you had to do is just project out, and you knew the numbers were going to be big. Uh, Glenn Rock had already told us, for God's sakes, I think maybe 10 or a dozen years, every other year, it's a letter that would come in. We can't pay this. And in one year, they actually laid out the fiscal reasons why. And so I told Chris Thornblazer when he asked me for a comment, I said, within a few years, you're going to see communities won't be able to pay. Now, this is hard for me to admit, but I got it wrong. Uh, my wife will tell you, I never admit I'm wrong. But, 
it didn't take a few years. It only took a few months because in that fall, when we went to put together the budget, when the actual percentages that rolled through for Glenrock, I was surprised myself, but their bill came in at $313,000. Well, they had a conniption up there and said, no, we can't do that, no way, no how. And you can go back in and read the October and the November Glenrock Council meeting minutes and you'll see what happened. They figured out, they were told what a PPU cost, they knew what they were willing to pay, which was like 285000 and they said, we're going to cut this many PPUs. And of course, under that PPU system, which I hate, uh, just to go on the record, there was a minimum that was recommended, or a minimum that you couldn't go, and then a recommended amount. They figured out what they were willing to pay and how many PPUs they could buy. That fell in between those two brackets. And so they said, that's what we'll pay. Now, all of that's part of the public record, and you probably, if you follow this, you knew that. But the part you may not know or may have gone unnoticed by some of you is how did the finance committee do with that when they said you've got to cut three quarters of a PPU out of the budget? Well, my initial reaction was we have a part-time officer who's one PPU. We'll just cut some of those hours out and move on. There was some concern. There was some discussion. And then the chief finally spoke up and said, you know what? I don't want to lose the part-time officer. I'd rather give up a full-time officer. Now, he didn't really have to give up the officer. What he gave up was a vacancy that we intended to fill, but we're not going to fill. So to appease Glenrock, your community lost one police officer. And so for all intents and purposes, never mind the SROs, you had 13 full-time police officers. You went down to 12. Now, that hurt your detective function. And if you don't believe me, read the February 2019 minutes of the police commission when the chief said his caseload on the, the detective's caseload were going up, their unsolved cases were going up because he didn't have enough manpower. And he asked us to approve some money for Storman, who was at that time had been injured and had gone on disability, was back as a civilian, wanted some extra money. The finance committee approved that. But the bottom line is to appease Glenrock, you lost a police officer and hurt your detective function. Okay, now move forward the next year. It's last year now. We're doing a, another police budget. The bill for Glenrock was going to go again over $300,000. And people were worried that Glenrock wouldn't be able to pay. You will recall that Winterstown had said they're out of there. They left. They already, you know, verified the point that, yeah, we can't afford it anymore. And they went someplace else. Now, Couple that with the fact that if you looked at the preliminary budgets, the, uh, there were a lot of capital expenditures last year, totaling probably close to almost $80,000. And the question was, do you put that into the budget? And if so, where was that going to drive the budget for Glenrock? And the answer was, it was going to go pretty high. So what was the answer? Rob Hertzberger from over there in, in Stewartstown proposed, we will pay for those capital expenditures by hitting the general reserve fund. They're allowed to do that under the terms of the IGA. I personally don't think it's very good management to say, I'm going to buy stuff this year that I hadn't already put in the budget. Okay, but they did it to do that. And one of the reasons to do that was to keep that cost down for Glenrock. Well, here you are in 2020. You can only, you have no more officers that you can't fill or hire anymore. You can't hit the piggy bank anymore. In fact, they took the, the 40000 that some of that that came in from the COVID money to help replenish that. You're not getting any of the money back from the health care rebates to help go in and replenish that fund. So, I mean, it's not that Glenrock is just now getting a seventy dollars or $80,000 increase. This commission has, over the last several years, taken several steps to artificially keep that cost down from Glenrock, and you can't do anything anymore. My honest suggestion is, uh, I don't know exactly where Buck is, but this may be one of the few times that he and I are in agreement. I'm really to say sayonara to Glenrock. Uh, and I know it may increase our costs. I've done a rough count on what the numbers are. And it, the impact to, Glen, to our con, uh, community is about $100,000. It's probably about $125,000 to Shrewsbury 
and on the order of $95,000 to Stewartstown. Now, when we talked about this one time before, about tossing Glen Rock out back when this whole thing started in 2018 or the dust really got kicked up, Stewartstown, you may recall, had made a statement, well, if Glen Rock leaves or somebody leaves, we're not sure that this is viable. Let me just suggest that for those of you who are sitting on the commission there, or if you run into any of this kind of argument, you might remind them that in 2012, the state did a study about the merger of Stewartstown Police with Southern Regional Police. And that report is available. In fact, I think we have that report, don't we, Tanya? And you can read in there. And in 2011, the cost to the Stewartstown uh, community for their police force, which I don't even believe was a 24-7 police force, was $525,000. If they accept the responsibility that we go forward with just three communities supporting our police department, their bill will be about $460,000. So if any of them tell, well, we don't know if we can do it, just ask them what public services they're getting today for 12% less than they were paying in 2011. Um, so I mean, just dismiss that argument outright. It is really time to tell Glen Rock I'm sorry, we can't afford to keep you here because you're really not in the same league with us. That doesn't mean we're turning them loose. I mean, God knows we all still pay for state police, okay? And there's plenty of communities right around here, you know, uh, that are using the state police and the blood doesn't run in the streets. Moreover, they can always hire their own part-time forces, like Winterstown went to it, North Hopewell Township. Um, the money said if they can only pay $250,000 for police, can hire new guys out of the academy. You can staff them and put some, you know, give them equipment, and they can probably get at least two, maybe three guys full time. It won't provide full time services, but if that's what they want in their community, let them have it. Now, my feeling is that extra hundred thousand that we spend, I know it's going to hurt people. Tanya's already told us that we've got people uh, that are delinquent on bills who have never been delinquent before. But I know Tanya, and, and I know, you know, I'm going to say this, Tanya, I hope I don't embarrass you. This lady's got a heart of gold, and people don't believe it. But uh, she works with these people to be compassionate, to do whatever she can to make sure that our community gets by. And if I have to pay extra money, I will pay extra money. But I want it spent in my community for the benefit of my citizens. I want the police, if we, the time that we're not spending in Glen Rock, that's at least 30 to 40 hours a week that could be spent either working with youth, you've heard enough He's about rec today, you've heard, you know, going to the senior center, telling seniors how to be safe in cyberspace, or telling them about don't get scanned by door-to-door -door people, really working with the community. There's a lot of things we could do with the police, uh, and I, I, I'm not even going to go into all of it, but there you have it. Uh, so I really would like to see, you know, you already passed the budget, so if you really want to insist on subsidizing Glenrock, it's probably too late this year, but next year, I'd like to see a line item in that budget that's called Glen Rock Charity. And you can just identify to the whole public how much money we're actually going to give to Glen Rock and then write them out a check for this. Because that's what it amounts to. And then finally, I'll get off my soapbox. After I talked with Chris Dornblazer and we sent in that uh, uh, letter to the uh, Southern Regional Police Commission saying that we would stay, it was read at the June meeting. Okay, and I want to just make sure I get this right. Chris Dornblazer came to that meeting and he reported on it. And you can go online and you can still find this report. It's there on the York Dispatch stuff. Google up New Freedom Southern Regional Police and you'll find it. And I just want to quote that started with these three sentences, his article that, that day reporting that. And it says, last month New Freedom Borough Council voted to rescind its letter of intent to withdraw from Southern Regional Police Department. On Wednesday, June 7th, a letter detailing their decision was read aloud during the Police Commission's monthly meeting, making their choice official. Quote, we are back to status quo, <coughs> business as usual, Chief Jim Boddington said after the meeting. How prophetic. Here we are again, status quo, back to business as usual with Glen Rock, year after year, can't pay the bill. Now, a lot of you ran for council to sit on that, on that side of the dais and said, I don't know if you wanted status quo or not, but I think it's time to start sowing a little more backbone with Glen Rock and either tell them to pay up or show them the door. Now, how you do that, um, you work it out in the IGA, 
uh, under the, according to the terms of the IGA, if they didn't deliver a letter, letter last month, they can't get out until they deliver the letter effective for next year, which puts them into about two and a half years. All right. you, if you want to stretch that, Steve, if you want to weigh in, the fact that Glen Rock told you, uh, you know, they told us they didn't give a letter, they said in October we can't pay it, I'd take that and say, you know what, Glen Rock, we can either make you stay through next year all the way and you pay that bill because three communities will support that, or you can say, you know what, the hell with it, we can all decide to waive it and Glen Rock, go ahead, cut you loose, you're gone and we'll figure out how to solve it ourselves. Yeah. That's Just all I got to say, thank I, you. I agree with you 100%. I mean, that's what we've been talking about. I agree. I think if we could make use of the, uh, the police officers here, Tanya has had several ideas as far as community outreach and service to the community, and uh, if we're just gonna have to keep floating them, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. You're, you're absolutely right. I, my daughter lives in Dallas, um, and I hear about what goes on. There's a community in the Dallas metro area known as Highland Park, and I don't know all the details, but my daughter tells me that in their community, the police, the fire, the EMTs, they're all sort of cross-trained. So if you're a cop and you come on duty here, you know what, something happens in EMT, you swap hats and you're out there doing CPR or whatever else. They make the most effective use out of the uh, uh, you know, first responders that they have. Uh, maybe it's time to get creative like that, but again, if we're going to pay more, I want to see it, my community benefit, not a checkbook written over to give to Glen Ross. Thanks. I agree. Thanks, Bruce. I appreciate it. Can I add one thing? Mm -hmm. You asked about Buck. Buck did say that um, he, he would be willing to compromise between those two percentages, um, so he thinks that that would be reasonable, but he did tell me on the phone tonight that he thinks maybe Glen Rock should look at, and Glen Rock doesn't agree with this because he already had that conversation with them, maybe having Southern Regional cover them during the day and up until 11 and having state police cover them from 11 p.m. at night till 7 in the morning. So they wouldn't be a full member in a, of Southern Regional uh, of the commission, but they would still get the police that, services. That's just effectively that. buying service, right? Right, but that's what he, I guess he's looking at set to say to Glen Rock, if you can't afford to pay your share, this is something you could do. He, he had that conversation, Glen Rock said, we don't want to do that, we don't want state police at night. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, there, I mean, there, there, Victoria wrote an email that was very derogatory towards police. I mean, I don't think that uh, I don't think that they're really in the mood to support the police or to have the police there. Um, I don't see much hope for keeping Glen Rock anyway. That's why I've been kind of heading in the direction that Bruce has been going, and and I, you know, I agree with that. I don't know how, how you feel or how the police commit the rest of the police. I committed. feel you, you pay for what you get, and this is what they've used over the last, we went back to 2000, what was it, 14? Yeah. Really, 2014, but we decided to go with the last three years, and 16. basically this is the service that they used from uh, Southern Regional Police. And yeah. this is what they'll probably continue to use. I, I almost think that I would ask the council, I can't make a motion, but I would ask the council perhaps to make a motion that we go along with the IGA and Mike Sharkey's um, presentation at our, at our last meeting that it is what it is. You know what? What, what, does that do? we're gonna, what does that do with Glen Rock? Well, it, they're going to have to, they're going to have to either or get off the pot, basically come up with what you owe and what you're using, or they could, like you said, they could decide they want to, they don't want to buy PPUs, they don't want to be a member, they want to be a contract municipality during the day. Right. The solicitor told us that if, if everybody, if all of the different municipalities decide they want to use the obligated time, and then Glenrock says, no, we're not using that, then it can go to that supermajority. So then it goes back to the police commission, and then we get three-fourths to say that we're going to use obligated time, then we're using obligated time. And then Glenrock will probably say they can't pay it. But you know, back when 
when New Freedom Borough and Shrewsbury Borough became part of the, the Glen Rocks Police Budget, the, the understanding, our understanding anyway, it's probably Shrewsbury Borough, was that we'll give them, it's, it's, a, it's an opportunity for them either to get their budget together, get their tax structure uh, adjusted so they can afford police going forward. And you know what happened? They didn't do anything. Uh -huh. And so we're, we're right back to where we were. They're, like we said, they're, they're still not doing anything. And so maybe they think, well, the, the, maybe the calculation is if they want us to stay bad enough, they'll pick up the slack for us or something, you know, be, us being Glenrock and, you know, but the handwriting's on the wall. I mean, you know, how, how, how expensive does it have to get before Glenrock just throws in the towel? I think, you know, we already got an idea what that is, where, where that is, and it just can't stay there. Uh, but at the yeah you know, at the last at the meeting we had, there is going to be another meeting. So I'm hoping that they will, you know, come forth and say, this is what we can afford, and then we could perhaps work with that and balance it. And if not, but but don't prolong it. Keep don't keep going on. And I agree with everybody else who do. But I also think that this council should should get in on it. Well, that's, to decide, that's why I brought to decide, it up. Because I think definitely, I definitely think that this council has a responsibility to do that. I think when you say what they'll come back to us with what they can afford, and so what if they what what if they what they can afford is way below what they're really using. And so I'm, I'm hoping that they, that they're putting their caps on wow. and thinking really hard until we have. I think the meeting is on the 17th, is it not? Yes. Yeah, is, I, is made, a I made a motion okay, is a that we on the continue, have a continuation meeting. And, 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 and to, finish to it at that. that time, because we just can't keep going like that. But at the same time, that I think that the council should be in on this whole uh, decision. Well, I, I think definitely council is going to be looking at what comes out of November 17th. Yes, yes. I think, you know, we made the motion to have, we made the motion to advertise the budget, but that doesn't mean that we're locked into what's, you know, what's in the budget for police. We're, yes. we, we would be open to good. whatever we, good. you know, to consider whatever we need to consider. That's a good decision. But I don't think that we could personally get, you know, I don't think we can all in mass go to the, to the, to the peak. Well, let's, let's see what happens on the yeah, 17th. I, I mean, it's interesting that, yeah, to the extent that the uh, representatives on the police commission that are representatives right. of, of New Freedom Borough, and sometimes it, they don't know the, how Borough Council is thinking. It's okay for them to have Borough Council convey to them Hey, you're our representatives, and here's the direction we would like to see this go. Yeah. I agree with you. Going to the meeting, it's you right. have a point of representative yeah. to yeah. do that for you. I would give you one example of your here regional police, and Redline Borough was a long time contracted municipality, and they were buying in excess of $650,000 worth of police services. And at some point in time, they said, We can't afford this, we only can afford X. And we said, Well, you use more services than X just based on the calls that you had. And it came down to if you can't afford it, you need to go. And they went. And it was, it was there with state yeah. police. And it, it, they, they reached the, the conclusion that I hear around here is there there is there it is unfair for other municipalities to supplement the costs yes, totally. of another I totally, municipality. I totally agree with that. And, totally. and I would I would tell you that police services they're expensive, and they're going to get more expensive. And the tensions I see with my clients that have police departments and regional police <coughs> is, I can't afford this, this is too expensive or whatever. I hate to say it to all these municipalities, unfortunately that's the reality of policing right now. It is a very expensive service, and you better get ready to pay for it, or if you can't pay for it, then at some point in time you got to find an alternative service, be it the state police or part time or whatever. Marsha? And yeah, I, I understand your desire for them to compromise and come up, but we were at the uh, council meeting in Glenrock when Sharkey pre presented, mm -hmm. and the animosity from that council against the police commission, and we're not going to pay it, and we're not going to do this. It was it was so palpable. It yeah. was like, please leave. 
You yeah. know, that's so, I mean, no, no, if they're not willing to, to, to work on their budget and, and, you know, come up with a reasonable thing, then I think just cut them loose. I they mean, you know, they have a, we they have this five-year belief, you know, five-year contract. Isn't that what we had? It went from three years to five years it came up. So then, you know, then it's time. But then, in, in all fairness, we have done, as, as human beings, we've done everything possible, and then just let it go. I, I think, I, I don't know that this is a motion, but I think that we can honestly say that we're interested in, in paying the actuals, which would put us at $530,886 in Glen Rock paying what they're supposed to pay. And if not, then we're interested in Glen Rock yes. leaving and us working out something with the other municipalities so I guess if you're looking for direction, does that sum yes, it up? Yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm that looking for tonight. Um, yeah. Does that? Does anyone have any that objection to? Uh, no, well, we I don't think we need to make. Yeah. I think that's just a direction. I mean, that's yeah. One rock thinks it's unfair. Point out what's unfair about yeah, the yeah. service they receive yeah. and the amount yeah. they receive because they're being over police or something. But apparently that's not yeah. the case. Mm -hmm. Right. So no, I mean, don't, yeah, Glen Rock. Yeah. And hope, hopefully, Chief will decide that he can work something out without having to. Fire to yeah. or lay off to. So can we just say so? Can we just say that that's our direction, pretty much, yes, and that yes, we're that willing to work with that? Good. And we will, we will go back to the police commission with with that report. And, and I would say to your observation earlier about what you, you, the year's notice. I haven't seen the contract right now, but I would I would assume that if every single member of that contract, every municipality, would agree. To waive the one-year notice, I'm sure that could occur, and therefore get them out earlier if they can't afford to be a member of the police. Well, the, the flip side of that too is they, they obviously have they obviously for a year. Yeah, but what I'm saying is if waive all the municipalities have waived the one-year notice, then I think you can, yeah. you know, and and accelerate the time. Yeah. The flip side of that, though, is there's going to be um, get out costs. I mean, there's yeah. you're, you're on the hook for pension obligations. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, absolutely. I mean, even even if they leave tomorrow, they're on the hook for some amount of dollars yeah. to, to cover that. It's yeah. yeah. forever. Yeah. Until yeah. the last police officer dies, they're on the hook yeah. for yeah. that. Steve, this might be, this is going to be, I guess, a massive for speculation on your part, but what if, you know, so that happens that Glen Rock's on the hook for it, and Glen Rock says, you know what, we're not paying it either. We don't want the police not paying it. We're not paying any pension obligation. Yeah. Either. So, yeah. Steve, Steve makes some money then because we're going to be so. Yeah, you're going to the court of common pleas and yeah. you know, trying to obtain a judgment against them for that expense. Yeah. Does anyone have anything else? So that overall increase of, Three hundred and some thousand dollars. Like, what would the increase look like then for the community? Like, I mean, how much does that really? So Bruce, Bruce just said <coughs> it's about a hundred thousand. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have the right. exact so numbers, but it's out. about a hundred thousand dollars to New Freedom. It would be about a hundred thousand. I ran some numbers earlier today. So per keep, house, to keep them as they are. Right. So like, per household, know, we're looking at right. whatever it is. I'm sorry. In, per household, you're looking at. I mean, not that much of an increase. Um, yeah, it really wouldn't be that much per household. No. And but we're not having to share with a whole another yeah. town. And and we would increase our own police services, and right. hopefully there would be other th other benefits to it too. Sure. Maybe some community outreach, some bike lessons, some. You know, just think they could even work with REC to do a program for CPR or for, you know, there'd be other things that they could do with the community. But those services would be given to the people who are actually paying the bills. Right. And that's what I think is. Yeah. Well, yeah. Do, Andy, do you, I, I don't know, do you, do you think they're, the police department, if we're asking to do that, they're prepared to have the training for the people to do these things? I mean, if we ask for them, you know, to, to start next year, let's say, and, and do community outreach, and do they have, because I don't know if they have experience with that in the past, and I don't know how much training their officers have to be able to do that, but if that's going to be the case, I think they should be looking at that, too, and how we get our officers trained for these kind of things and be freedom. If there's going to be more community outreach and be freedom, uh, it's not... It's not their standard policing model right yeah. now where they do that. So, you know, they have to get some additional training, and hopefully they'll do that. 
Well, there's probably some, some of the officers probably have more of a, um, a um, ability to, to interact with the community Maybe. than yeah. some of the other ones. So I mean, I, I think they're probably. They already do stuff in the community. They're yeah. at the carnival. They're at, um, what is it called? The police night, like the oh yeah, light, yeah. light the night. Or yeah, light the night. night. Like I see them doing a lot of of things in the. I, when I would have the teen dances, I mean they would just stop by and talk to the kids and things like that. So yeah, I don't think it's a reach. I think, I think no, not at all. And I think if we had I don't a fun, if they, if they still have the bicycle unit, but I know all the kids used to love the officer that was running around town on the bike you know he'd stop he'd talk to them if there was a problem you know he got to know them and and they would come to him and say hey by the way there's going to be a drug deal going on in back of town and so i heard you know we got information by making friends with kids and other people in the in the community we really do and we had that at one time i i remember that did you have? Yeah, I mean, just as sort of the mechanism of how you do this, I mean, talking about some strategies, I think Steve's probably right. I mean, if all the communities agree to do something, you can waive or change whatever you want to in that uh, IGA. But, I mean, it might make sense to, you know, to tell Glenrock, you know, obviously they're, they're probably not prepared to go out and secure some other police services in the next six weeks. So it's like, and, and, and we probably, as Denny pointed out, the police might may need to rethink how would they structure these kind of community programs and what they need to do. I mean, you might suggest something along the lines of, you know, if you're getting out, you know, come July 1st, you're done. The first six months, you take the next six months to figure out what you're going to do. The police department will spend its six months trying to figure out how it's going to better serve the remaining communities and set a termination date there. Glen Rock, you pay the full amount for the first six months, which will, you know, be about 170,000, which is probably on the order of $100,000 less than the current planning, and they can figure out what to do with that $100,000 and how they're going to move forward in the second half of the year. So, I, I think a lot has to go with how you present it, but I think a lot of those things, as Steve said, uh, if it's up to us and we want to waive it and change it, we can do it. Marcia, I have a question for Steve. You've worked on a lot of, of police department consolidations. I know, I read three years ago that the state police, because they've been dipping into that general fund, are, is going to start charging communities for services. Can you, have you heard anything about where that is right now? I mean, Glenrock should be paying attention. They're not going to get off scot free using state police, maybe for a year, yeah, but. It, it's been a very political issue and it comes up every year around budget time where there's proposals set forth as to how we're going to charge local communities for the use of state police and I think for the past three years it's come up with a formula and it's never been approved by the legislature you have attention of small uh, representatives that represent small counties and municipalities who can't afford to pay anything and they always vote against it and therefore it never gets enough votes to, to actually be adopted but I, I would agree that there's been more momentum every single year. So at yeah. some point in time, that's going to occur. I just hope when it occurs, it's uh, that they come up with a fee that's a fair representation of the service they're getting. My concern is that they'll put their toe halfway in the water and charge a small fee so it's not too painful right. when really these municipalities are getting a very valuable service from the state. And we're all paying for it. Mm -hmm. yeah, Steve. And when that happens, uh, one of the other problems with the municipality is they're not, they're not going to get full police service like we do. State police are not going to enforce any local ordinance. So they're going to have to have somebody that they're going to have to hire. And I remember in the past, they wanted to give the mayor and all their council members ticket books so they could go out <laughs> and issue, and issue <laughs> tickets. Can we do that in free? I got a couple of free. I'd like to get, get a pad and for some parking. But, you know, they're not going to get from state police. They have two units that run from Dover to Maryland Line every night. There are two officers 
in each of those units. And if a tractor trailer overturns on 83 and something happens in Glen Rock or here, if we had state police or right over on Hamilton at Hamilton Overlook, it's going to be three days till they get a police officer there if you're looking at state police. And maybe they need to learn that the hard way because they keep saying, we see state police coming through here every day, every day. Well, yeah, they're coming through to go to what? Because the war is served. Go somewhere else. Yeah. We're somewhere else. Did we have anything on the uh, Intergovernmental Committee? Eric, uh, Kim? Just, uh, Kim and I have been uh, attending Stewartstown, Shrewsbury, Glenrock, uh, just keeping our face relevant. and. Uh, got some nice comments from Shrewsbury that they appreciate the fact that we're we're there working together and uh, and seeing our faces and knowing that we're available and, uh, we want to be a part of the available and want to be a part of, uh, of the local scene Any other public comment? Okay. Um, we don't really need an executive session. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, um, the senior center. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you just can you consider yeah. <coughs> the community building. What are we going to do about the community building until the January 1st? Are we going Could to use the microphone? microphone? No, we get microphone. I just wanted to have the council consider reopening the community center, whether or not we feel at this particular time is appropriate. So I can inform the senior center. Yeah, I, I think we're, we're still in the same holding pattern. I mean, they just closed York Catholic for yeah. a week. Uh, they've had three uh, cases of COVID. Um, my uh, granddaughter just went in. I have not seen her for she's at college but they, she's been in quarantine now she'll get out uh, I think tomorrow um, I don't think we're in a position yet unless someone has something that I don't know we have to make a motion maybe Joe Biden will come up with something <laughs> <laughs> that'll work <laughs> uh, sure yeah, I, I would entertain a motion to keep the uh, community center closed until uh, I think maybe just make it for the first of the year. Yeah. If some, I mean, if some obviously if a vaccine comes up and something dramatic happens, but I, I don't foresee that, so I would entertain a motion for the first of the year. And I'll second it. Okay. I think you made it. Yeah. Yeah. And all in favor? I'll second. Opposed? Okay. My vote is aye. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, uh, Tanya, we, um, the, the, the cameras are running, yeah. and the last, the last meeting, Kim got to me the, the, the video, and we've got it up on YouTube now, and if you search New Freedom Borough on YouTube, you'll find it. And I reached out to the guy that does the website, Richard, and said, uh, can you put it, can you put it on the website? He said, oh, it'd be easy, yeah, it wouldn't be any problem at all. And I said, well, maybe where we where we show the the file, you know, the, the the minutes of the meeting, you have another little button there that says video, and you know, oh, yeah, we so that makes sense for everybody. Yeah. Well, he, he he won't he won't listen to me. So if, could could you tell him? <laughs> yeah. and, and also, and also apparently I can't send him the video. Or I can, I got a link on on. All I have to do is send him a link. You want me to send it to him, or do you want to send it? I thought I sent it to both of you, we'll say all the goes. Okay. Because all it is is it's like twelve characters. Okay. And when you get that, you put that underneath the little button, you click on it, you go right to the YouTube thing. Okay. While he's on that page with the meeting minutes, the months um where he says like September twenty twenty is lime green, light lime green on a light tan background. So you can't even see the months to click on. Could he make all the fonts white? Because like the paragraphs white, but then when he lists the individual months for the minutes, it's this color that, that blends into the background and it's so hard to see. iPads or iPhones, it, it doesn't show up. If you do it on your computer, 
Yeah, he needs to change the color white. Helpful. Um, I don't think we need the executive session for personnel. I think we already know what's going on. And uh, brings us to adjourn. I'll make a motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.